Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Back with you once again with this, with part two of this spirit-led teaching, uh, separating religious repentance from spiritual repentance, and we're going to get right into it. Second Timothy one seven says, "God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, peace, and of a sound mind. Of love, peace, and of a sound mind." So. Repentance is not fear-based, it's faith-based. Because we don't have the spirit of fear. We don't, we, we don't repent for the consequences of sin. But of love, peace, and a sound mind, we uh, repent because of our sin. And when we repent because of our sin, as Romans 7, 7 not Romans, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10 says, when we, there's true repentance, there's true salvation because true repentance leads to true salvation. False repentance, false salvation. Uh, Proverbs 14, 26, in the fear of the Lord is strong confidence and his children shall have a place of uh, refuge. The fear of the Lord is the reverence of the law. Now, in the fear of the Lord, so you have to be in the fear of the Lord. The only way to be in the fear of the Spirit is to be born of the Spirit. And you're going to have that place of refuge because once you're born into the Spirit, Christ through your transformed Spirit makes alive the soul and the body by the fruit of the Spirit. Now you got a new root and you got new fruit. You're in that gated community. You're in that gated community. No evil can befall you. 1 John 1 5 says, uh, 1 John 1 5, uh, John 4 24 says, God is the spirit. They that walk with him must walk with him in spirit and in truth. This is why repentance is spiritual. When, when Jesus said, God is the spirit, that changed everything. That changed everything. What we thought we knew. We realized then we didn't know. So God is the spirit and they that walk with him must walk with him in spirit and in truth. 1 John 1, 5 and 6. 5 says God is light and in him is no darkness at all. He's the light. He's not the letter. Okay. So we must walk with him in the light of his truth. 6 says if we say we have fellowship with him, that's by revelation of the spirit. And we are abiding in darkness. We're still following the letter of the Spirit. He says we are liars and the truth is not in us because we're in our carnality under the law of commandments. But we're not alive in our spirituality in the law of life, which is Christ Jesus. One John four sixteen. Four sixteen says that God is love. 1 John 4, 16 says that God is love. And he that fear it is not made perfect in love because uh, love does not have fear. Love will cause you to overcome fear, but love does not have fear. This is why uh, he that fear it is not made perfect in love. If one fears they're not complete in love, then they're still under the law. Because to be complete in God's love is to, is to be completely free from the law because the law was not made for a righteous man. A righteous spiritual man or woman. The unrighteous are under the law of commandments. The righteous are in grace. Okay, let us go to uh, Romans 6, 2. Romans chapter 6, verse 2. It says, How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? How did you get freed from sin? You died to sin. And when you died to sin, you were freed from sin. You can't be freed from sin any other way. It's it, it, it is a supernatural work of Christ. His death became our death 
we did to, we, we died to sin and we died to the law. When his life became our life, we were resurrected. We were resurrected to the newness of life in him in the spirit. So how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? We don't. Because that which is freed from sin can no longer live in sin. Well, you can't live in sin to begin with. You can exist in sin. But anything living is alive from sin. All right. Uh, Romans 6.6. 6. Knowing this, that our old man, that's the old carnal spiritual man that was under the law, is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed. The old carnal man under the law, sin was, what his, sin was his root, and he was bound to the flesh by the fruit. The old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin. We should not serve sin. That henceforth we should not serve sin. All right. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Sin, that's verse 7. All right. We are freed from sin. And how did you get freed from sin? By true repentance. Where you were grieved for your sin. And not that false repentance where you will only grieve for the consequences of your sin. Let us go to 1 John 3, 4 through 10. 1 John 3, 4 through 10. One John three four through ten. Four. Whosoever committed sin transgressed the transgressed also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law, and we were all transgressors under the law, because we were born dead in our sins and trespasses under the law as transgressors. So, no matter what kind of change, so we all existed sinfully. No matter what kind of change has taken place in the flesh, you have to go from law to grace in the spirit because you still have that penalty that is due to you under the law. You still have that penalty that is due and that penalty can take you out. Once the penalty of judgment drops on, on our carnality under the law in the spirit, it, it can have a major effect on our our humanity in the flesh. It can impact us physically in the flesh because that judgment can wreak, can wreak havoc on the flesh. So we got to go from law to grace. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin. Christ was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin, none. Whosoever abideth in him, sin it not. Whosoever sin it has not seen him, neither known him. Whosoever abides in him has repented from sin. And when you from you repent from truly repent from sin in the spirit, that leads to salvation is going to be evident by the fruit of Christ's spirit. Those that once saw you and knew you in the dark, they're going to still see you, but they ain't going to know you in the light. They ain't going to know you in the light. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that do it right, he that doeth righteousness is righteous even as he is righteous. He that does righteousness. He through whom is being produced the fruits of righteousness, they are spiritually righteous as Christ righteous is righteous. Because the fruit of Christ has to come through your sinless spirit, which is in the image of Christ. Your spirit has to be sinless. And it only becomes sinless through being born of the Spirit.
8, he that committed sin is of the devil. Now that's wrong. He that committed sin is of the devil. Why? Because the devil is sinning through you. Now we have to know the difference between the fruit of sin and the act of sin. He that commits sin is of the devil. That means you're still rooted in sin and bound to the flesh by the fruit of sin. So he that sinned it is of the devil. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might take away our sins. For this purpose was the Son of God manifested, that he might destroy, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now, when it says manifested, not only manifest into the world, but manifest into the world through you and I. But before he can destroy the works of the devil through us, he has to destroy the work of the devil in us. And that comes through being born of the Spirit. That comes through being born of the Spirit. And being born of the Spirit, he brings you to a place of true repentance. True repentance. He was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. This is why Satan don't want you in the light, because only light can defeat darkness. He doesn't care how religious you are. He doesn't care how, how religious you are. He don't care how much scripture you quote. His aim is to, is to imitate Christianity. He does not imitate Buddha. He does not imitate Muhammad. He only imitates Christ. Why is that? Why does he only imitate Christ? He only imitates Christ because Christ is the true light. And he is that false light. He's the false Christ. Christ is the true light. He's the true Christ. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. That which is born of God cannot sin because you're cut off from the root of sin. And soul and body dies to the fruit of sin. That's what happens when you're born of the spirit. Then through your transformed spirit, the soul and body is made alive from the fruit of sin by the fruit of righteousness. That which is born of God cannot sin. In this, the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Anybody not born of the Spirit is a child of the devil. Anybody not born of the Spirit is a child of the devil. And the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Neither is he that love is not his brother. In this, the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. So the devil has children, and his children are very religious, and they're very biblical at that. Who were the people that hated Christ? The religious people. The people that profess to be godly, and they act godly in the flesh, but they weren't godly in spirit. Because the being born of the spirit was a threat to their power. They didn't want that taught in their religious synagogues. Just like the gospel is not taught in many of these inspirational churches who are inspiring people in the flesh to live their best life in the flesh, but the true gospel of the spirit, according to uh, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4 is hidden from them because Satan got them blinded to it. And that brings us to a close of, of part two of this teaching. And I'll see you in part three. Love you in the Lord. See you next time.